Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to History Chats uh, today. Yeah, we're going to get started in a couple minutes here. Um, as always, we're just going to leave the, you know, just get started and let people join if they want to join us this afternoon here. Um, we are getting started with a new month here with History Chats. So uh, this week we are starting off with um, an early figure in Wasis history, August Kickbush, and we have some more stuff coming up throughout all of that. I guess while we're waiting, let me tell you about some of that stuff. Um, so this is this is our, our month-long graphic here for all of our uh, people you should know for this month. So it's an interesting mix of some older, older figures, some newer people, um, some artists, some politicians, some city leaders. Um, should be some interesting mix of stuff, so we'll have to look forward to that. Um, next week, um, since I have a graphic lined up here, we're going to talk about Frank Schubert, which is, has a lot of similarities to the guy we're going to talk about today uh, in some ways, except instead of being a, a businessman necessarily, he was more of an entertainer and musician. Um, but anyway, we'll talk more about that next week. Um, by the way, our, our uh, next History Speaks lecture uh, is going to be a little bit different. We're going to actually have a screening of a documentary produced locally here. Um, about local guy, um, Ted, Ted Gaden, uh, Tuba Ted. is a tuba player and a lot more than that, just an interesting guy all around. Um, and a great documentary was produced a few years ago about him. And, you know, now that we can have people in person again, we're, we're finally getting around to doing a screening here. So we'll have a screening of, of the documentary here in person um, at the museum, as well as uh, a chance to talk to um, the director um, and producer of the, the documentary, Susan uh, Reitz. Um, and I believe Ted is going to maybe make an appearance himself, so you have to come out for that one. Um, yeah, so that's not this weekend. Um, that's actually next weekend, June 11th. Um, and again, this is probably not something that we're going to be live streaming, considering it's a documentary. But um, yeah, should be still pretty good if you can make it out. Uh, this weekend, though, just, just you know, since I, I thought of it, I put this together. Uh, we're going to actually be at the WASA uh, first annual Pride event. Um, We'll have a little booth there at the 400 block. So if you're going to be in Wassa on um, Saturday here on June 4th, you know, come say hi. I'm sure that they would enjoy it. We'd enjoy, uh, you know, seeing you there. So yeah, that's stuff coming up. Uh, but that's not why we're here today. Today we're here to talk about August Kickbush. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, just just turn it over to Gary. Um, if you have any questions or comments, if you're watching live, feel free to, to drop those into the, the chat section. Um, and we'll maybe have some time for questions if those come up. But otherwise, um, yeah, here's here's Gary with the with the history. Great, thank you, Ben, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so this afternoon we're going to be talking about August Kickbush. Uh, when we talk about Aug August Kickbush, it's kind of surprising that we haven't talked about him before. But this year uh, we're celebrating uh, 150 years of this uh, Wasa as being a city. So our attention automatically went to August Kickbush uh, this year because he was the first mayor of the city uh, back in 1872. Um, August Kickbush uh, is a uh, complicated and a variety of different roles in the city uh, person. He, um, he played a lot, a big part of the history of Wausau in the, in the beginning, in the, 1800s, as soon as he came to Wausau, and then the rest of his life was a very important part of this city. And we'll tell you a little bit about that today. Uh, a variety of different things about him, the German life, the political life, the mercantile life, a variety of different things that his life touched uh, in the city of Wausau during a lot of those years. But first of all, I just want to briefly summarize his, his life, born in 1828 in Pomerania. You'll, you'll hear a lot about that. Um, came to America in 1857, came to Wausau. Eight, we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, these topics a little bit later. Came to Clark's Island, purchased a store on first in Washington, then, and then an important part in the life of the German life of the city, he went back to uh, Germany in 1867 
on the Steamer America and brought back um, a variety of different Germans to come back to Marathon County, work in the sawmills. We won't, uh, and in the far farmland of Marathon County, um, we won't spend too much time, but we, it's important that we understand that he did play an important part in the life of the German life here in Wassa. Wassa became a village in 1861. Uh, August Kick was just president of that village in 60, 1865 and 1866. Uh, he became involved with the formation of St. Paul's now United Church of Christ at Fifth and Washington. Uh, 1872, the first mayor, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about this, street grading was a big thing. Uh, at that time, only one one year terms. So in 1873, August, I'm sorry, Jacob Path became mayor, and um, Mayor Kickbush was again elected in 1874. Uh, August Kickbush passed away May 28th, 1901. But we have to begin with Wassa in the 1870s. So this is a bird's eye view of Wassa 1879. This little community uh, hemmed in by the, as you see, the railroads. Uh, the railroads didn't quite come in during August Kickbush's first term, but eventually they would be coming in in, in the 1870s. Um, a large, even though this is a small compact community. It was hustling and bustling. And, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And he played a part in that. Uh, again, this is the, um, the city in the 1870s. Again, more of an aerial view of what was happening a little bit on the west side, but most of it on the east side. So August Kickbush came with his family from a part of Prussia, part of Germany, what's called Pomerania. He came from the uh, community of Kohlberg, which sits on the Baltic Sea to the north of Pomerania. So in the history of Marathon County, in the history of Wausau, we'll see a great many Pomeranians coming into, into Wausau. Um, not only to work in the city, uh, but to start to take up the farmland as the white pine was starting to be cut. So this, it's hard for me to imagine the, the great migration out of this part of Germany uh, into places like Marathon County, but uh, it was, and they, and they came from ports, the Hamburg, um, Bremerhaven, a variety of ports in, in Germany, the immigrants on board um, making that big step of getting on board that ship, saying goodbye to relatives, set no, perhaps knowing that they were never going to see their relatives again. Uh, but they were after the freedom that they thought America would be providing them. And I think that a part of August Kick Bush's story is the fact that he indeed was part of this immigration uh, into Wausau and Marathon County. So eventually uh, he came to Wausau. He claimed to what we call Clark's Island. Um, this is an early, he, he, he had a shack uh, as most of the buildings were at that time in the 1850s and 1860s, a shack on, uh, on Clark's Island. This is an island in the middle of the Wisconsin River, just so that you, you don't really understand Clark's Island today as you cross the Wisconsin River. You don't have a, really a sense of the island, but it is that island where the railroad depot is now coming off of Washington and Scott Streets uh, coming uh, wet, going west to um, uh, the the bank building on the west side. Uh, the kayak stat the kayak statue is there. That's Clark's Island. This is where the early settlements, the early sawmills were were coming to was Clark's Island. Now this was after John Clark, uh, one of the early settlers here also. 
August Kickbush uh, was not alone when he came to Germany. Uh, we aren't going to spend uh, a very little time on, we're going to spend a very little time on his brother Frederick. Uh, Frederick came with him. Uh, Frederick was also in the mercantile. Eventually, he started a flour mill and he also lo uh, some lumber interest throughout Marathon County. Also, he eventually would would be a consulate to uh, from America to um, the consulate of Germany in Stettin. So he was also a very important person in the history of Wausau, uh, Frederick Kickbush. Again, a little bit of a sense of the German population. Uh, we had mentioned prior that he went, August Kickbush went back to Germany uh, brought some Germans, uh, Pomeranians, back to Marathon County. So by 1885, 33% of Marathon County were people born in Germany. These were foreign-born. They're not They're not the firstborn, but they are the firstborn, and 33% were from Germany. And of course, as the years went went on into the eight uh, closer to the 1900s, uh, the population changed, of course, Polish, uh, some Scandinavians, some Norwegians came in. So it, it changed a lot. But at this one moment in time, uh, Germany held a uh, foreign born, th a third of the people were foreign born Germans. So getting back again to um, August Kickbush. Uh, when he came, he had a little shack on Clark's Island where he first settled, but eventually he would start um, a little store, a general store, a merchant store on First and Washington. And uh, those buildings uh, were there until the, until the, the mall came in. Uh, they were on that corner, that southeast corner of Washington. And, uh, and first, on this map, it's... Main Street, back in the day, First Street was Main Street, um, and he had his store on that corner. Uh, eventually, he would also take up the, the store across the street, and he would own both both uh, stores there on that intersection of Washington and First. So this was his store. Uh, he started to build it. We're not quite sure with the record exactly how he came to to land his interest in being a merchant. We know that he landed, originally landed in Milwaukee. He came up uh, and then he, went, he went, came up to Wausau, then went back and then he walked up a cartload of merchant merchandise to Wausau uh, to start this little store on the corner. And from this little store, uh, it would become quite quite an establishment. He would be, um, eventually he would, and his descendants would have a very large August Kickbush wholesale grocery store. Uh, so he started, he had his beginnings as a merchant, and this really did influence his popularity throughout the, throughout the community. I think people really saw him as a true a merchant um, taking care of the needs of the population. And I think this really led to a lot of his popularity. Eventually, he would uh, come build, a, his family would build a large uh, wholesale grocery business on Washington Street. Um, this building is now gone. This would basically be the parking lot of the uh, public library on the lower level. You know, uh, large large business, large business, uh, growing to be quite a, quite a substantial business. Uh, his wholesale grocery business here in the city of Wausau. So you know, one of the so we conclude the story by saying that he earned a lot of his popularity. He lot earned a lot of his notoriety. Uh, from his grocery business, a true, a true merchant in the city of Wausau. But the, the, so then we sort of go ahead to 1872. Um, the election uh, 
Wausau is now a city declared sus by the state legislature. In early April, we have an election, and I know this is a bad copy, but this is the only one I, um, the only reference I could find to, to this notice uh, saying um, uh, our city uh, electors passed, passed off quietly and, and, and pretty much all on the regular, um, uh, were, and the regulars were elected. Mr. B, um, Mr. Plummer's name was placed uh, by his friends, uh, but but then he de decided to take his name off the ballot for Mr. August Kickbush for mayor. Um, so then August Kickbush at this time in 1872 was elected uh, the first mayor of the city. Um, and this is where he had his um, office. The first office, the first city hall was in the firehouse of the city of Wausau, which stood at that time on Courthouse Square. So we would eventually, uh, we would eventually build a new city hall, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but this is where August Kickbush first held, first um, managed the city of Wausau. This, of course, was also uh, the village hall uh, for many years as we were as we were a village. I just want to make point in our history. I want to make mention of this that a Mrs. B, I'm sorry, an H. A. Wiley, was voted for by some of her electors as they were of the. Um, went on to say that if if the electors would have and if she would have campaigned a little bit more, she might have been able to win. This name of H. A. Mrs. H. A. Wiley, kind of important because we I don't. I have not uh, heard of her before um, as a person who was interested in local politics. So uh, in the description of the election, the Central Wisconsin, which was a Republican newspaper, making note of uh, because August Kickbush was a Democrat. So I'm not sure if they were being partisan here or not, but at least there was a little note about this Mrs. H. A. Wiley, and I think for future, for future research, we have our work to do in discovering what the story about Mrs. H. A. Wiley was all about. Just a little sidelight to that. So the first mayor um, had a vision of Wassa. August Kickbush delivered. This is from a 1922 paper, uh, talking about um, the mayor's first speech. Uh, in April of 1872, recognized value of good schools, good roads for the benefit of the community. And our, one of the things that we notice about this time, there's a very little record. Um, August, I'm sorry, Louis Marchetti's history written in 1913 talks a little bit about this. All we have to depend on really for the flavor of what Wasser was like in the 1870s as it became a city was the look was the newspapers. So um, what it would have been like if August Kickbush had kept a journal, Walter McIndoe had kept a journal describing what life would have been what life was really like. So we really don't have a good perspective on what what was going on. But we do know that as this, as August Kickbush took the mayor's spot, Wasa was just really very young. So like this headline said, good foundation laid, what were we after at that time? We wanted good schools and good roads for the benefit of the community. Those were the important things in 1872, really that guided the early mayors um, and early city councils in their decisions with regard to the city. And the, uh, the Herald back in 1922 also quoted his, and I just want to read this to you because um, this Mr. Kickbush concluded his, his uh, speech, uh, they're quoting it, with such efficient and competent officers as were elected here. 
in each department, I am confident that we will amply enable to keep and maintain peace and order in the city and a due observance of all laws and also the different ordinances and regulations as may be acted upon. And let it be our aim and the ambition of every citizen of this community to make the city of Wausau the pearl of the Wisconsin River. So they knew they had big, a big job to do. They are now a city and they were moving on uh, to a new era in our history. And I think August Kickbush and the rest of the people surrounding him and the rest of the city fathers at that time knew exactly what we were about. And they were up to, up to, up to the job. And I think that they proceeded very well as they carried on their job. Again, this was their first city hall. Uh, their first uh, desk was in this firehouse. Eventually, they would build this uh, this wonderful city hall on Washington Street. Um, quite a quite a remarkable architectural splendor. Uh, it would be. Wonderful today, if we were to be able to keep this landmark here on Washington Street, it was certainly a, a testament to early city fathers to make sure that the city of Wausau had a really a, a quality city hall uh, that the city fathers would be meeting in. But like I said before, August Kickbush was, invo uh, was involved with other things. Um, he was a charter member of St. Paul's at that time, Evangelical and Reformed Church on the corner of Fifth and Washington Street. Um, as you can notice in the bottom, in, in the, you know, a lot of fellow Germans were these charter members, Mr. Paff, Mr. Dern, Mr. Lemke, um, Mr. Ringel, you know, all these city fathers were aligned in chartering St. Paul's, which was uh, at that time a little bit of Calvinist and a little bit of Lutheran, um, a, pro, uh, a, a German-speaking Protestant church at that time. Uh, they eventually would have this church also on, this is no longer here, but this uh, they spoke German. They printed their, their booklets in German for a long time, uh, very proud of their German heritage. Mr. Kickbush, of course, was also interested in other things. He was a partner for many years of, with the George Ruder Brewing Company on Grand Avenue. Uh, he had many other interests, Cornet, you know. So this sort of led him into the, into the social part of what it meant to be German in the 1860s and 70s and 80s with the brewing company, the, the the a little park that would be coming to the south of the brewery and a variety of other things that were going on. He was really a true civic leader uh, at that uh, during this time. And his civic leadership uh, also meant that in 1867, uh, him and uh, Mr. Plummer would donate 80 acres of land uh, on the on this west side of of the city of Wausau to um, the Agricultural Society for fairgrounds. They, again, it's a very, was very important to the early citizens that they would not only take advantage of the agricultural life that was going on at this time, but they also wanted to provide an opportunity for people to gather in parks and to have a lot of fun that way. So, um, Again, Mr. Plummer and Mr. Kickbush donated this land to the Agricultural Society. In 1920, um, the Agricultural Society would donate this to Marathon County as a Marathon County Park. So again, a long history. You know, we've been as told that history uh, many times through a variety of different ways, uh, that history of Marathon County Park. So with that, it's hard to put everything together with regard to August Kickbush. But at, in this year of eight, uh, celebrating 150 years of the city of Wausau, we thought it would make reference to the fact that he indeed was the first mayor. And 
He sat in this community, had great influence in the German life of this community, the political life of this community, the cultural life of this community, the social life of this community, and his influence is well known even to this day. We name a street after him. We have we have a Kickbush Plaza, uh, so we still acknowledge Mr. Kickbush to this day, uh, not only as being the first mayor, but for his life uh, in the in the 1800s here in Wassa. So with that, I'll turn it back to Ben. We're going to be uh, moving forward with a new. Oh, I just realized maybe your mic wasn't on for that. <laughs> I turned the wrong mic on. Uh, so you people probably didn't hear any of this, did you? Whoops. Um, sorry about that. Um, so we, we, we were just talking about, um, we had a, a question. I don't know when I accidentally hit the wrong button there. Uh, but there's a question about the um, a, a, a building, a grocery store, um, maybe Kick Bush um, on the corner of Sherman and First Avenue, uh, actually kind of over here. Yeah, it's on the west side. Uh, but but uh, Gary Gary mentioned that it actually was um, not Kick Bush, but Kishel. So um, close, um, and still still one of those buildings from that era, or you know, labor grocery stores and stuff. But um, yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, we're back. Um, I'm just going to check one more time here if there's any little lingering questions. Oh, any lingering questions? I don't see any. So yeah, I think we'll we'll maybe call it there. Thanks. Uh, ooh. No. Okay. Well, thanks for the feedback. I'm not. <laughs> okay. So it must it must not have, that must be the thing. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Hopefully you can hear all that now. Um, sorry for that again. And uh, well, yeah. I think we'll call it there. Have a wonderful afternoon, um, a wonderful week. We will be back next week with some more uh, people you should know. Another another early German uh, figure here from um, Frank Schubert. Anyway, have a wonderful afternoon. We'll see you next time.